Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, show you how to write the equation of a hyperbola when given different pieces of information. Now, the one piece of information that is going to be consistent for all of these is going to be our center is at 0, 0. So again, when looking into writing the equation of an ellipse, or a hyperbola, I'm sorry, we have two equations. We have one where the transverse axis is vertical because A is under the x. Um, here we have the transverse axis is uh, vertical because the A is under the y. So whenever you're trying to write the equation, I think the main important thing, just like we did for ellipse, plot the information, determine if your transverse axis is vertical or horizontal. Because remember, what lies on the transverse axis is going to be your uh, vertices, your foci, as well as the center, where the conjugate axis is perpendicular to that, and that lies on the covertices as well as the center, because the transverse axis and conjugate axis intersect at the center, which I'll talk a little bit more about as we get through. So anyways, we have a piece of information. We have points. Everybody should be able to plot points. So let's plot the points and label them. That will give us a good idea of what exactly we're looking at. So I have 0, negative 6, 0, positive 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So those are my two foci. Now automatically, I, sh I should know what my transverse axis is because my foci lie on the transverse axis. So therefore, I know my transverse axis is vertical. That means I'm going to be using this equation. Okay. So automatically right now, I'm just going to write in that equation because I know that's the equation I'm going to be using. And I don't want to confuse it with the horizontal equation. OK. Um, so also, just by noticing where my two foci are, I already told you the center is always going to be at 0, 0. I can also now determine what the value of c is. Remember, a is the distance from the center to your vertices. B is the distance from your center to your covertices. C is the distance from your center to your foci. So I already know this from the center to my foci is 6. So I know that, uh, so I don't know a yet. I don't know b yet. But I know c is 6. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I can see my vertices are at negative 2 and 2. So I'm going to go up 2, down 2, vertices and vertices. So the distance from my center to my vertice is a, which is, in this case is 2. So now I know it. Um, actually, let's do these in a different color. So you can see that's 2 and that's 6. Last one is we need to figure out what b is because b um, is right there. It's part of the equation. We don't really care about c, actually. But c is going to be very helpful for us to be able to determine this because of that equation, which is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So we know c squared is 6 squared, which is 36. a squared is 2 squared, which is 4, plus b squared. So I minus 4 minus 4. So I get 32 equals b squared. Oh. OK, well, a, b, and c. So I don't really need to know what b is, though. I need to know what a squared is, which if, if a is 2, that means a squared is 4. And b squared is 32. So I really don't actually need to know what b is. I just need to know what a squared and b squared are. Uh, remember, my h and my k are at 0, 0. So for the first one, I'll plug in. I'll squared minus 32. Now, typically, we'll simplify this, and that's what I'll do for the rest of the problems, because what's y minus 0? It's just y. What's x minus 0? It's just x. But I wanted to show you that, yeah, that center points 0, 0 is still there. But for the rest of them, I'm just going to write it as, as the simplified term. All right, so in the next one, now I have um, foci and vertices again, but I have vertices that are not very fun to uh, graph. But that's OK. Well, let's just kind of do our best here. So now you can see my points are negative 4 and 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, centers at 0, 0. Vertice and vertice. So now, automatically, you can see that now, oops, those aren't vertices, those are foci. Now you can see my two foci are going left and right, right? So now I'm going to be using my uh, horizontal transverse axis equation. And then automatically from there, I can determine that my value of c, in this case, is 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll just do again a equals, b equals, and c equals. So we know c is equal to 4. 
um, A is going to be the distance from your center to your vertices, which you can see from the center center, I'm going left or right the square root of 3. So yeah, I could plot them, which is going to be you know, 1 and between 1 and 2. But it doesn't really matter. I know it's going left and right. So A is going to be the square root of 3. Remember, the A is your absolute distance. You're going to the left and to the right. You're going positive direction and negative direction, even if it's up or down or left or right. But the absolute value, absolute distance, is going to be the square root of 3. Now we just need to figure out what B is. So again, I'll go back to my equation. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. I know C, uh, C is 4, so C squared is 16. A is 3. Actually, let's just write in on this one. So I have 4 squared equals the square root of 3 squared plus b squared. 4 squared is 16. The square root of 3 squared is just going to equal 3 equals b squared Oops, plus minus 3 minus 3. Therefore, 13 equals b squared. So I don't really need to know what b is. I just need to know what b squared is. So if a is square root of 3, that means a squared is equal to 3 b squared is equal to 13. And I don't really care what c squared is because it's not a part of our equation. I know that my h and my k are 0, 0 because, again, for all of these problems, the center is at the origin. So now I'll just plug in my information. I'm not going to plug in 0 for h and k like I did in this problem. I'm just going to write it as their simplified form, which would be x squared over 3 minus y squared over 13 equals 1. And there you go. All right, so for the next one, um, a lot of students, you know, well, actually, let's plot the information. Now, asymptotes, that's going to be a line, right? And eh, I could graph the line, but I don't really think it's going to be helping us too much. The main important thing is I want to determine what is my transverse axis. Is it vertical or is it horizontal? Because basically by knowing that, I will know um, which equations to be using. So if I plot my covertices, remember your covertices lie on your conjugate axis which is <coughs> perpendicular to your transverse axis. So my covertices are at neg are 5, negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So those are my covertices. Remember, the center is at 0, 0. If my, co if my <coughs> covertices are going horizontally, that means my conjugate, conjugate axis is horizontal. That means my transverse axis is vertical. So therefore, it's going to be just like I'm going to use the same equation. So I'm going to say y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. OK. Um, <clears throat> now I still need to figure out what my a and my b are. Well, at least fortunately, we know what our b is because the distance from your center to your covertices is b. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So b equals 5. Awesome. Um, the next problem is, though, to figure out a. Well, fortunately, since this is a vertical, vertical we look like this. Notice that the vertical equation, y equals plus or minus a over b. So we know b is 5, so that means a is equal to 3. Now that I know I'm at a and my b, I know my h and k are 0, 0. I'm just going to plug it in. So it'd be y minus 0, which is just y squared, over a squared, which is 3 squared, which is 9, minus x squared over b squared, which is 5. 5 squared is 25 equals 1. So it wasn't that bad. All right, uh, last example. Here I'm given the covertices and the foci. So in the previous problems, you know, we were always given one. Now we're given one of each. <coughs> Oh, it would have been nice to give me a covertices and vertices. Yeah, well, I guess that would have been too easy. So, all right, so let's plot the information here. So my covertices are at 0, plus or minus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Covertice, covertice, center is at 0, 0. Foci are at 8, comma 0, negative 8, comma 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK, uh, remember that my covertices lie on the conjugate axis, my vertices and my foci lie on the transverse axis. So therefore, this is horizontal. So I'm going to be using the horizontal equation. Um, we know that <coughs> the distance from the center to your covertice is b, which in this case is 
uh, 4. We know the distance from the center to your vertice is C, which in this case is going to be 8, which you could also just count. So if we know that uh, C squared equals A squared plus B squared, we know what 8 is. 8 squared is 64 equals A squared, which we don't know, uh, plus 16. Well, we'll subtract 16, subtract 16, and that will give me 48 equals A squared. And again, we're not trying to find A. We just need to figure out what A squared is. So now I'll just plug in the information. Uh, I guess I can just rewrite the equation again. And again, I'm choosing this equation because I know that the transverse axis is horizontal, which is the case over here. Um, so now I know A squared, which is 48. Uh, B squared, B is 4, so B squared is 16. H and K are at 0, 0. So my final equation is X squared over 48 minus Y squared. Y squared, I'm sorry, yeah, Y squared over B squared. To, 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 where's B? B is 4, so B squared is 16 equals 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write the equation of a hyperbola when given different pieces of information. Thanks.